But uh, the whole thing really has been misconceived from the start, from September 12, 2001 to now. And our response needs to be uh, drastically reformulated on a number of levels. But most notably, I think, there needs to be an awareness of what, how exactly the battle is being fought, what the objective is, and then there will flow from that certain things that we can do in order to protect these universal human rights that are uh, uh, accepted by and enjoyed by people all around the world. And so there ought to be a, 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 a viable coalition that could be built on the basis of defending them. Uh, let's see, everybody I've heard from already, so yeah, go ahead. I just want you to uh, discuss maybe about uh, population growth in the Muslim world versus in what you see the outcome is going to be. Well, the population of the Muslims in Europe is growing very quickly. The population of non-Muslims in Europe is decreasing. And so uh, probably there will be Islamic majorities in various Western European states before the end of the century. Uh, Bernard Lewis, the great historian, said very flatly, Europe will be Islamic by the end of the century. Um, there are numerous implications of that. I mean, certainly uh, not all Muslims in Europe want to impose Islamic law, but there will be calls for it increasingly. And there are already, there are already enclaves in various areas in Europe where the law of the land is not respected and Islamic law is essentially in place. I was in London a few months ago, and uh, you can walk down whole neighborhoods, you know, not just one street, but whole districts of London where uh, you would think from everything on the street, from uh, the signage and the stores and uh, the people all along the street, you would think that you're in Karachi. Um, and so those areas are only going to grow and the areas of England uh, that are non-Muslim are only going to continue to decrease Ultimately, then, England will be an Islamic state. Probably there will be strife, there will be violence before that happens. I hope not, but I think that there will ultimately be a small group of people who do not want that outcome and will fight. But it's already so late that I don't think that can be avoided. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just was wondering, don't you think that the media is focusing a lot on the Islam and ignoring completely the white supremacists? Like, a few days ago, I just heard about the Antichrist movement. And honestly, I'm Arab, but I'm Christian, and I belong to this minority, and I do feel sometimes more threatened and ha at the airport. I'm always chosen randomly, though I'm Christian, and I don't support by any mean any, like, fanatism or any. But I do think that, um, as uh, Edward Said put it so beautifully, I'm Christian wrapped in Islamic culture, and I must say that I do not believe that, I don't see in any, every Muslim a potential killer to me, but, I see the white supremacist who looks at me and thinks I'm, I'm dirt, that's equally a same threat to me. And I think that the media doesn't support, doesn't see that. If you live in the Arab world, it's honestly, it's west versus east. If you're on the other side, the white people are the bad people. If you live on this side, it's always the Muslim people. And I feel that it's no longer about religion as much as it's about economic and politics and imperialism. Mm -hmm. Where so, are you from? I'm from Lebanon. Yeah, are you Maronite or Melkite or Orthodox? I'm Greek Orthodox. Yeah. That's I wonderful. do, I have to admit, I do support, I'm completely against the jihad, and I've suffered, I love the civil war, but I have to oppose your idea that Israel is not the most beautiful uh, Middle East, uh, freedom, and so on and so forth, and I, well, the reason why on. I put it out do one thing at a time? Because yes. I'm going to forget the other stuff you said. It, it, I just said that for me, Zionism, the, the white supremacists, yeah. and the potential threat of the Islam are equally yeah. the same, but I think media supports one, ignoring the other. Anyway, I'm a uh, Melkite myself, and I'm, my family is from that area of the world. And Girl. I uh, travel from what is now the Ottoman Empire, a little bit north of Lebanon. Uh, I but, swore uh, to God that the moment I saw you, I told him he has blood in him. Yeah, <laughs> and so the reason why I tell you that is because, uh, you know, people say I'm a racist, and I think, what, are you kidding me? Uh, I, against I, my own race? I, I, I agree with what you but, said, uh, I don't think it's let's, racism, but to a certain extent you show it as a heinous speech. I'm sorry to say this. Yeah. I, well, I have Muslim friends with respect, are that's a lot of hooey. But in any case, I will explain. <laughs> um, the thing about it is this. I go to airports too. I'm in airports practically every week. You look Muslim. And you know something? I got a beard, I got a Quran, <laughs> and I get searched a lot. Do I get delayed a lot. One thing that happened was, uh, one thing happened to me recently. I was in Washington, and I gave a talk in Washington, 
that uh, the, the nature of the talk, I, I was quoting a lot of people. I was quoting a lot of Islamic supremacists and jihadists, quoting a lot of Quran. Yes. And so just for ready reference, I don't, I don't read from a prepared text when I speak, but uh, I had all these quotes in my pocket here. <laughs> and it was just the quotes, nothing else. So there was nothing on the paper that showed I was against it. Okay, and it was all about, you know, one of them was Maududi. Non-Muslims have absolutely no right to wield the reins of power in any part of God's earth. That's, now that's in a speech, not anything I'm doing. I'm just quoting it. But anyway, anyway, all that kind of thing is on this paper. I take off, you know, I take off your jacket. So I take off the jacket and I put it on the, 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 the whatever thing and, and the thing drops out. And I didn't notice because I was in a hurry. My plane was going to leave. And I get into, I get to the gate and I'm sitting there and suddenly I'm surrounded by police. Welcome to my world. And they, no, this happens to me all the time. This is not the only incident. And they took the paper and showed it to me. I started laughing because I realized, oh, there's nothing on there that says I'm against it. So I had to explain to them, and I went away to talk to them, and I explained to them, and you know something? This is the moral of the story. I don't mind. I don't mind because I know I'm not doing anything wrong, and I am an American citizen, and I love America, and so I'm happy to put up with some inconvenience so that my fellow uh, uh, Americans don't get blown up, so that you don't get blown up, and so that they don't get blown up on an airplane. Okay, Hold I'm, on, I'm, I'm not done. I'm guy. not he done. Get at the airport, Are you going to let me answer the question? I don't get to answer the question. I love you, but you have to let me answer the question. I don't love you, sir. Yeah, I know you don't, but I still love you anyway. And anyway, That's a this is the value, deal, sir. huh? That's a Christian value, sir. Yes, it is. Yes. So, if anybody is not doing anything wrong, and if anybody is against getting blown up in airports, then I think that they shouldn't have any problem, and I don't have any problem. I tell you, just on my way here. I was in the airport, and they said, we want to search your luggage again, and I said, okay. And they searched it, and then they went back and said, we're going to put this through one more time. And I was thinking, well, this is taking a really long time. What's going on? And so I went up. I went up and looked at what they were doing, and they had these two books out in a tray by themselves, and they were looking through the books, and they had them over here, and they had my luggage, and they're going through everything. I don't mind. I'd rather that they be careful, and then we're subject to some inconvenience. I'm sorry. But doesn't this year I have it as much chosen as you. and him not because he has blue eyes? No, you know what? You know why? It's an imperfect thing. It's an imperfect thing, but it doesn't. No, it doesn't anger me. Uh, because, see, there are a lot of converts to Islam who are high up in the jihad. You know? Adam Gadan is from California. He's a Jewish boy, as a matter of fact. And he converted to Islam, and now he's high up in Al-Qaeda, he makes videos. He, 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 did you see the one he mentioned me? It was so nice of him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was very, honest, very honored that he, he noticed. But in any case, um, nobody would have stopped at him if he was dressed as a Westerner, you know, like your friend. If he was dressed like My that. Husband. Your husband, excuse me. If he's dressed like that, then nobody's going to stop at him in the airport. So it's not a perfect system. However, most of the terror attacks have been perpetrated by people who are Arab or Pakistani. Most of them. The Nigerian guy. Yeah, and then there's the Nigerian guy, whose father was a, is a, is a, spent a lot of money spreading Sharia in Nigeria. And well, anyway, I digress. The, um, the, the, the thing is, is that it's a waste of resources to give just as much scrutiny to your friend, to your husband, than it is to everybody who is from the, from the groups that are potentially a greater threat. Yeah. 